Welcome to Tell the People, a program about our Catholic faith with news and information in and around the Catholic Diocese of Lafayette. I'm Trista Littell, and in today's show, I will have an interview with Father Rusty Richard talking about St. Martin de Tours Church in St. Martinville as being one of the pilgrimage sites to visit for this year of mercy. In this segment, What It Means to Be Catholic, Father Clinton Sinsett continues our Year of Mercy series, and his talks are about indulgences. And Father Bryce Sibley and Paul George will be here to talk about Cajun Catholic students at ULL as they feel in for vacationing Bishop Douglas Desitel. But first, Catholic news on this July 17th weekend. The Diocese Office of Justice and Peace along with the diaconate aspirants for the permanent diaconate, is organizing the collection of school supplies for children whose parents are incarcerated. Your generosity will provide the means to accomplish our mission to be sensitive and generous to those in most need, especially the children who struggle with their special circumstances. What can you do? Purchase items needed for elementary and junior high students and drop off at Office of Justice and Peace, Catholic Diocese of Lafayette, 1408 Cormel Drive in Lafayette. The drop-off deadline is this week. For more information, please call 261-5545. The Museum of the Cathedral of St. John the Evangelist at 914 St. John Street in Lafayette will host an art exhibit featuring the works of Jean Medol, a 19th century French artist from July 1st through October 31st. Jean Medol was a calligrapher, a miniaturist, and a writer classified among the best religious painters in the mid-19th century. Between 1836 and 1863, his art was popular. The exhibit presents reproductions of 10 original religious paintings, several signed and dated 1843 from an unfinished album by Jean Medoul, which was discovered only recently. 2016 is the premier viewing of these paintings. The reproductions are available in a limited edition of 100 framed 11 inch by 20 inch with matte and non-glare glass in the original size of the paintings. The reproductions are also available in a limited edition of 250 framed 8 by 10 inch with non-glare glass in a reduced size of the original paintings. For more information, call 662-6688 for viewing and availability. This is a great summertime event to tour the St. John Cathedral Museum. A men's workday has been scheduled by the Community of Jesus Crucified for Our Lady of Sorrows Retreat Center located at 103 Railroad Avenue in St. Martinville. Volunteers are asked to give of their time and skills from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday, July 23rd. Men who have experience in carpentry, plumbing, electrical work, painting, concrete work, and general cleaning are encouraged to lend a hand. Holy Mass will be celebrated at 12 noon, and lunch will be provided for the volunteers. For more information, call the Center of Jesus Crucified at 394-6550. Last year's first ever Fête de Détache Eucharistic Boat Procession in honor of the arrival of the Acadians and the 250th anniversary of the St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church in St. Martinville was a great success. It has been decided the Eucharistic Boat Procession will be an annual event. The next Fête de Détache Eucharistic Boat Procession is coming up. Please spread the word. Schedule your vacation day for Monday, 
August 15th, the Feast of the Assumption, and bring your family. Bishop Douglas Desitel will begin the day with Mass at 8 a.m. at St. Leo the Great in Leonville. Then a Eucharistic boat procession travels down Bayou Tesh. The procession will make several prayerful stops for the Rosary and Benediction in Orneville, Cecilia, Brobridge, Parks, and it arrives at St. Martinville at 5 p.m., ending in St. Martinville at Our Lady of Sorrows, Mate Dolorosa Chapel for Vespers and Benediction. The Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, RCIA at St. Bernard and St. Francis of Assisi Churches in Bro Bridge is a process in which adults are fully initiated into the Roman Catholic Church. The process welcomes non-baptized adults, baptized adults from other Christian faiths, as well as Catholics who want to complete their sacraments of Holy Communion and or Confirmation. Testimonies and registration will be offered at St. Francis of Assisi Church during the weekend of August 6th through the 7th and at St. Bernard Church during the weekend of August 13th through the 14th. Classes will begin on August 21st and will be held on Sunday mornings from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. For further details, please call 322 79 Nine zero, And that's Catholic News for this week. Coming up next, in an effort to invite Catholics to visit the 10 pilgrimage sites in the Catholic Diocese of Lafayette and to gain indulgences during this year of mercy, we're inviting persons from the pilgrimage site to come and tell the people and not only invite individuals or groups to visit, but to also know a little history and items to look for while on pilgrimage. Today, we have Father Rusty Richard from St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church in St. Martinville, Louisiana on this program. Welcome, Father Rusty Richard. Well, hello, Trista. It's a pleasure to be here with you from the inside of historic St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church in St. Martinville, Louisiana. Please tell us a little history of St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church Parish. St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church is the oldest established parish in uh, South Louisiana, in Acadiana. It's affectionately known as the Mother Church of the Acadians. We recently celebrated our 250th anniversary. Why has St. Martin de Tours Church Parish been chosen as a pilgrimage site? And what does it mean to South Central Louisiana for St. Martin de Tours to be the Mother Church of the Acadians? As the Mother Church of the Acadians, not only is this the oldest canonically established parish, but here we are inside the oldest church building in our diocese. The current building that we're in was built in the 1830s. It was completed in the early 1840s and dedicated, and it's been a, a sanctuary uh, for people of faith for all these many, many years. Describe the church building and grounds of St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church. Because of its age, St. Martin de Tours is historically a fascinating church to be in. You've got colonial style box pews, you've got turn of the century, ways of the cross, you have statuary that comes from any time period. You have this wonderful painting behind me of St. Martin de Tours himself cutting his cloak when he was still a Roman soldier and giving half that cloak to a beggar. And, and then you have St. Martin de Tours uh, having a dream that night and Jesus comes to him in the dream and Jesus is wearing that half of the cloak that he gave to the beggar and it was at that point when the Roman soldier was converted and was baptized Catholic. Uh, and so you have this wonderful rich history here, this beautiful church building that's been used to celebrate our Catholic faith for many, many generations. For pilgrimage folks yet to come, what are the unique items to look for to make their pilgrimage trip special and memorable? 
in addition to all that I just talked about here in the interior of the church, there's also a very famous and historic grotto in honor of Our Lady of Lourdes. The grotto was built in the 1860s, early 1870s, uh, by a freed slave in honor of his freedom. And so not only do pilgrims come to see the church, pilgrims come to pray at the grotto. And in addition, if that wasn't enough to bring pilgrims here, there is the statue of Evangeline out on the church grounds that's also been uh, a destination, uh, an attraction for pilgrims to come and see that famous statue on our church grounds as well. What are your hours of operation for folks to visit? The church here is always open because we always have pilgrims joining us for prayer. And so the church is open each day of the week from 8 o'clock in the morning to 5 o'clock in the evening. If one wishes to attend Holy Mass here, what are your Mass times? Our Mass times on the weekend, we have an anticipated Mass Saturday evening at 4 o'clock. We have two Masses Sunday morning at 8 and at 10, and we have an evening Mass on Sunday at 5 o'clock. We also have daily Mass here Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 6.30 in the morning, and we have a 5.30 Novena Mass on Tuesday in honor of our Blessed Mother. Now, if you forget all of that, you can look us up on the web at www.stmartindetours.org, and you can find all of our Mass times listed there. Since the start of the Year of Mercy, what have you noticed or have been touched with about the folks on pilgrimage? Their numbers and where are they from? You know, Trista, I'm always amazed at how many pilgrims come through this church. There are pilgrims who visit St. Martin de Tours on a daily basis, sometimes entire tour buses. We've had church parishes come by the bus load. Uh, that's evidence just by the little pilgrim brochures that we have at the entrances of the church. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those brochures have been taken throughout this year of mercy. It really touches my heart to see so many people come to such an historic church building to bring their prayers like so many of the faithful have come before, to bring their prayers to the Lord, asking the Lord for mercy, especially during this holy year. What would you like to say to folks as an invitation to visit St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church in St. Martinville as we wrap up this interview? And so Trista, I certainly want to invite uh, Catholics from all over the diocese to come to our pilgrim site, to walk through our holy doors, to receive that jubilee indulgence of mercy, and to come and pray at this historic and beautiful shrine of St. Martin de Tours in St. Martinville, Louisiana. Father Resty, thank you so much for allowing us to interview you about St. Martin de Tours Catholic Church in historic St. Martinville, Louisiana. Coming up next in the segment, What It Means to Be Catholic, Father Clinton Sensat is here for our Year of Mercy series. His talks are about indulgences. Good morning, Acadiana. My name is Father Sinsat, pastor of St. Thomas More Catholic Church in Eunice and chaplain of LSUE. And I'm happy to be joining you once again as we continue to discuss the theology of indulgences in this year of mercy. And we've already discussed the reality of sin and the consequences of sin. And if your memory is much better than mine, you might remember weeks ago when we talked about the fact that sin has two faces, a bifacial nature that it turns away from God and it turns toward a creature. And so today we're going to talk about the importance of penance in our spiritual life, to make up for turning away from God, to deal with the consequences of sin, to take seriously the reality of sin, and to continue to work on this sickness that's in our heart that comes from sin. And the church and Jesus Christ himself have prescribed for us several ways of dealing with this. And these ways are known as penance. And all the penances that we do, whether it's Lenten penances or personal penances, whether it's fasting or prayer or almsgiving, whether it's self-denial in certain other ways, all of these penances are medicines for us to continue to help to deal with sin. And they're all connected to the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of confession. 
So I want to pause on this for just a little while. I know many of our viewers here have very powerful spiritual lives, frankly, probably much more powerful than mine. And I know that we all do a lot of different practices. I'm sure many of you have done the De Montfort consecration to Mary or the 33 days to morning glory. And St. Louis Marie de Montfort talks about how that's important because it makes new our baptismal vows. I'm sure many of your children and grandchildren and nieces and nephews have had to do service projects and retreats for the sacrament of confirmation. And we say that that's important because it directs us to the Holy Spirit and the gift of being active in the church. I'm sure many of you have done Eucharistic adoration. And we know that Eucharistic adoration is important in itself as we adore the Lord Jesus Christ, but that it also leads us up to the Mass. And so you see that a lot of our spiritual practices point to the sacraments that Jesus himself instituted. And the same should be true of penance. My brothers and sisters, whenever we go to confession, and I tell people in confession this all the time, there are two things that happen in confession. The first is that our sins are wiped away. And the second is that we're given the strength to avoid sinning in the future. And so as I often tell people who come to me for confession, confession is both a cure and a vaccine. That it both cures what's been wrong with us due to sin, and it vaccinates us against sinning in the future, especially if we go to confession very fervently and very strongly with deep charity in our heart. Well, the penances that we do, the self-denials that we do, the fasting that we do, many is the old penances of waking up early or sleeping on the floor or taking cold baths. Maybe it's spending hours in prayer. Maybe it's giving a sacrificial part of our income to the church or to the poor. The penances that we do point to doing the same thing that confession does, but at a lower level. And the penances that we do help confession and they help the problem of our sins. So what do we do? When we sin mortally against God, we've incurred, as I've talked about already, an infinite debt. Well, there's nothing you or I can do to pay back an infinite debt. If you have infinite money, we invite you to come be a parishioner at St. Thomas More Catholic Church because we'd love to put your money in our collection. But if you don't have infinite money or infinite anything, like, you know, all of us, then the only one who can pay back that infinite debt that we owe to God is Jesus Christ himself. So we go to confession and that infinite debt is wiped away. But what about the fact that we turn toward the creature, turn toward chocolate, turn toward self-pleasure, turn toward pride, turn toward anger? Too much. Well, you can't turn infinitely toward chocolate. You can't turn infinitely toward anger. And so, even though we've turned against God and Jesus repays that, the partial turning that we have toward the creature, that's our job, to repay that, to make up for that. And that's why we get penance in confession, and that's why we do penance even outside of confession, to strengthen and straighten our hearts for the addictive, crazy, twisted loves that we have for creaturely things. See, we're kind of like iron filings. I don't know if y'all remember this kind of thing that you did whenever you were in grade school. Iron filings, we used to pour them out on the table and then we'd run a magnet through them and all the iron filings would, whoop, they'd all point in one way based on the magnetic field. And that's what charity and grace is supposed to do to our heart. It's supposed to take all of our affections and whoop, point them right to God. But a lot of times because of our attachments, because of our over-love for the things that God has made. The affections and thoughts of our heart don't point to Him. And we need to wrestle them down and bring them back. And so one thing that we do is we do penance to make up for the fact that our heart is twisted away from God. But then we also do penance to avoid the twisting of our heart and instead focus it and discipline it to keep it focused on God. And so you see that penance is very much like the sacrament of confession. It deals with sins that we've done in the past, but it also helps us avoid sin in the future. But now what if you've done a lot of sin and you don't think that you can fast enough to make up for it? 
or you're at the end of your life? What if the weight and the debt of penance that you owe to God for all your twisting and turning toward creatures instead of toward Him? What if that's too much? What if you don't have time? What if it's beyond your strength? Well, my brothers and sisters, that debt of penance that we incur and perhaps cannot pay, that debt that we owe God, this is where indulgences come in. Because indulgences come in to wipe away the debt of penance that we owe if we cannot pay it or if we've already died with debt unpaid and therefore stand in purgatory. And so I encourage you to do penance, to repent, to believe in the gospel, to do works of penance before it's too late, but also to offer up indulgences for those poor souls who died in debt and still yet owe something to God. God bless you all. Thank you, Father Sinsat. Coming up next, Father Bryce Sibley and Paul George will be here to talk about Cajun Catholic students at ULL as they feel in for vacationing Bishop Douglas Desitel. Welcome to this exciting episode of Tell the People. My name is Father Bryce Sibley and I'm the pastor and chaplain of Our Lady of Wisdom Church and Catholic Student Center on the campus of UL. And just like last week, have our very special guest, Mr. Paul George. We're both doing our best to take the place of Bishop Desitel while he is out for vacation <clears throat> in the month of July. What's going on, Paul? Big shoes to fill, That's Father. Right. And lucky for everyone, we're going to be here for every episode. For the next, next three weeks after this week. That's it. So we've been talking a little bit about Catholic campus ministry. And last week we talked about why Catholic campus ministry is so important for the church. And today what we're going to do is talk a little bit about um, what we call the five pillars of formation. Paul, when you were back in college, you probably remember Catholic campus ministry might have been pizza night and an inspirational talk and some <clears throat> guitar music. Well, we've really changed that. If we really want to have an impact on these young people's lives and we want to have an impact on our culture, we've got to form the students. Yeah, you really do. You have to be intentional. I think when you and I were in college, more of the approach of campus ministry was students will land on campus and they'll just find us. Mm -hmm. And we, what we're finding is that that's just not the case anymore. Some will, will be intentional about it, but the majority really, uh, you have to be intentional about the ministry that you do and how you go about reaching the thousands of students that are on the campus. And so we have five pillars, five pillars of formation. We're gonna talk a little bit about each one of those um, and what we do at Our Lady of Wisdom to help form future Catholics. So the first one is the most important. The first one is pray, we have to teach young people to pray. So Paul, what, what do we do or what would you like to comment on that? Well, I think at the, at the root of, of this pillar of prayer is relationship with Christ. So you're not just praying into a tree or something. I mean, it's relationship with, not. with Jesus. That, right? And prayer is the center and the focus of that pillar, of that relationship with Christ. So around that, I mean, not only we teach students how to pray, how to read scripture and pray with scripture, but of course the sacramental life of the church mass and adoration and the rosary and Lexio Divina, all these things that we incorporate to really teach the whole person how to pray. And one of the big things we do too is have retreats all through the year uh, where young people are able to go and go deeper in their prayer. Even around Christmas time, a silent retreat, five days, where yep. we usually get about 20 or 30 kids to come and really spend some time with the Lord. The second pillar of formation that we think is so important is to teach people to think, to yes. reason, understand about their faith. And this is one that I'm very passionate about. We have different classes, we have lectures, uh, theological discussions, the, the Newman Knights um, question and answer series. What else do you see, Paul, about the importance of teaching young people to think, to form them to think about their faith? Well, we know that faith and reason are connected. And if we, you don't teach people how to think and think critically about questions that are in the world or faith, and they won't be able to navigate through the tough times and really defend the faith or even know the faith. What we're really finding is that students are hungry to know the, the intellectual formation of the faith, to know what we believe and what we teach, and they really absorb it and, and bring it in. So we have you know, teaching nights and Bible studies and Newman nights and Newman lectures, uh, catechetical classes, I mean, you name it, students can really leave 
their four years at UL well formed. So they've been praying, they've been learning to think about their faith, right. and so we want them to go out. One of the big ways we want them to go out is in service and realizing that they need to reach out in love to their brothers and sisters, particularly those in need. So we do a lot at Our Lady of Wisdom for that. One of the things I'm involved in is every Thursday morning we go down to St. Joseph's Diner, a group of students, and we don't feed them in there. We just really relate to them, talking to them, sort of seeing them as persons. Uh, we've been doing that for about two or three years now, and it's been a really big success. Yeah, it's the one-on-one -on -one ministry to the homeless. There's also outreach to those who have had abortions on campus. We have a pro-life group. Uh, we have numerous students who go on mission trips to places all around the world. In fact, we had one of our students just lead a mission trip to a very impoverished area of Alaska. And so I really find, I think you do too, that students have a heart for service. They don't just want to pray, they just don't want to learn, they want to go out and, and help people. In fact, we have some going uh, this month to Gallup, New Mexico to do yeah. some work on the reservations. Well, it's faith in action. Father, yeah. And, and really, once you know the faith and know Christ, promote you to move and do something with it. Fourth, to be formed as a human being and formed as a Christian, you can't just be formed in your faith. You have to have a chance to celebrate, to have community, to have right. fun, to live. And so our fourth pillar of formation is that pillar of live. We want to teach young people how to live. And so particularly in Southern Louisiana, where there's that joie de vivre, uh, so many different opportunities to celebrate and form community and learn how to relate to others as humans. What are some of your favorite things, Paul? Yeah, laissez le bon terroule. I think that's what sets us apart from a lot of other campus ministries, even um, non-Catholic ones. And I think what students don't realize who aren't practicing their faith, they're like, wow, you guys, you Catholics or Christians really have a good time. And it's really inviting to people who were like, oh, you guys just don't sit and pray the whole time, but you interact and you have fun, you dance and you sing and you do all these things. So we have a lot of community nights, you know, lots of music, lots of food. I like really, that. I really enjoy the tailgating before the football games. Oh yeah, and it's true. I think a lot of times people think, well, the Catholics, y'all are around praying all the time and very somber. But instead, we're having a great time. We usually cook a gumbo or we barbecue. Everyone gets together. We're not together. talking about a few. We're talking about hundreds, hundreds of students yeah. who gather. So it, it's really. Uh, a magnet for others to gather with us. Anybody out there I want to help cook, you give me a call. We're yeah. always looking for volunteers. We have some hungry college students. And then finally is go. Now, of course, we're sort of witty and spell it G-E-A-U-X, but we want the students to go and to evangelize. And one of the big things that we've had over the course of the past five years now at Wisdom is the presence of FOCUS, the Fellowship of Catholic University Students. These are recent college grads who come in a couple of years of their life to go to the mission territories of college campuses and to evangelize. Have you found that to be successful? Very successful, and it builds into the DNA of our program and our students uh, the fact that Christians are called to go out, Matthew 28. So a church that turns in on itself ends up dying, and we're not a church of that. The Catholic Church is one that has always evangelized and always gone out to the world to share the gospel. Well, speaking of going out, we have about run out of time. Paul, this is really going by pretty quickly, these discussions. Time flies when you're having fun. So that's the second of our five different episodes or installments we'll be doing. We're really glad that you joined us this morning for Tell the People. My name is Father Bryce Sibley. This is Paul George taking the place of Bishop Doug Desitel. Next week, we'll be back to talk a little bit more about Catholic campus ministry and why it's so important to support it. Y'all have a great week. Thank you, Father Sibley and Paul George. We hope you have enjoyed our program because it is produced for you. So please join us next week on this station as we tell the people about the Diocese of Lafayette and the good news of our Catholic faith.